I want to just take a couple of minutes. This is also uh, two offerings. And, and again, we symbolically talk about people coming the second time um, up because we must, say must, remember the poor. Um, I want you to know this generation of Christians, the world will not be judged any more than they've ever been judged. This generation of Christians will be judged higher than any other generation. Because there's never been a generation that doesn't just have one book of the Bible. They have every book of the Bible. Some of us have 10 or 12 Bibles. I can go on YouTube, some, see some of the greatest preachers there's ever been. I want you to know whom to whom much is given, much is required. I was telling someone the other day, because I've said this for years, when we used to have cassette tapes. Anybody old enough to remember cassette tapes? I used to say a lot of Christians have tapeworm. <laughs> and meaning that they would put a tape in and just listen and they put another tape in. But you gotta look at your life. And I told someone recently, I said, you know, you're better to listen to one message a hundred times than a hundred messages once. Because see, the Western theology is get into our brain. So a lot of Christians go to church to get stuff in their brain. That's okay if you get it from your brain to your heart. Brain never works. There's no faith in your brain. And that's why it takes time to get it into your heart. And that's why we hang around in church and we hear things over and over and over again. Because once you get into your heart, you get power. Just like I can't believe how many Christians don't think about the poor when the Bible's filled with it because they only think about their little promises. And a lot of them have the little promises, but they don't read the conditions to the promises. Then they get discouraged because God didn't do it the way I thought he was going to do it. And I'm going to take my toys to go home. Well, you can take your toys to go home, but he's still going to hold you responsible. Now, I told you in the last few weeks, this is a strategic time in our history. Things are happening all over the place that he is expecting this church because he calls you soldiers. He's expecting you to stand in the gap. I said at a prayer meeting, I've said week after week, there's times I'm allowed to teach this way. There's a lot of times I have to teach that way. And I, I, this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit about Paul and all the people that didn't like Paul. Paul has one little chapter where he talks about all the people that don't like him because he tells them stuff they don't want to hear but it's okay, God stuck him in the Bible. Anybody know Paul got stuck in the Bible, amen? And um, I, don't, I doubt if he even thought. So this is connected to communion, how powerful communion is and how powerful loving the world and the poor is. Um, and we're gonna, I'm just gonna hit it fairly quickly. Say fairly means nothing. <laughs> and it says in, in Genesis 15, it says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram. He was still Abram. This is when he gets told he's going to have a kid because he, he's complaining that he doesn't have a kid. And here's what God says before he complains. God says to him, Abraham, because you left town, because you left when I told you to leave, here's what I'm going to say to you. Do not be afraid. He had a lot of rights to be afraid. If you read his life, Abram, I am your shield. Would you say that with me? I am your shield. That means I'm going to protect you. Thank God I've had God as my shield for a long time. And then he goes on and says, I am, see it's I am your shield. And then it goes on to say, I am your very great reward. Say very great reward. I break the spirit of defeat over people. You've come to get set free today. I break the spirit. See, it's a spirit that you've allowed into your life. When you're un, not born again, the spirits around you, you don't know. Once you get born again, we invite spirits in to our atmosphere. Not, nobody's been possessed. There's no possession. Because your spirit is dead before it's born again, then it's alive after it's born again. There is oppression. There is possession of parts of your body, maybe parts of your mind. Never get confused with thinking that something can totally possess you. You have the free will. Even the guy with 6,000 demons could fight off all the demons, get to Jesus and get totally free. Say amen. So you came here this morning. That's a word. I wouldn't plan saying that. Somebody came with great defeat. God just gave you a word. If you take 
take that seed right now and begin to say, what do I do with that? And you, God has just given you a key, say a key to get free. Say, God just gave you a key to get free. I don't know who it's, who it's to. Matter of fact, it's to all of us. And then it goes on because he says, well, I don't have a kid and da, 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 because you're allowed to tell God stuff like that. Then Abram, it says, believed God. Say it with me. He believed God. Say, say it again. He believed God. Abram believed God. And here's what it says. As soon as he believed God, God says, you got it, baby. It says it was accounted unto him for righteous. It, meant, it put him in the right place. Now, remember, it took years for it to manifest. Like the other week, I'm preaching away, and I'd never seen it like this, because again, I talked about Bill Prankard being a prophet to Canada. He doesn't say it, I say it. And I said, the reason I know was that, but I never said it this way until last week, where the people that went with him to Catherine Coleman, he didn't want to be there. But when they were in that meeting, God healed them but nobody knew they were healed because God held back the manifestation until he crossed into Canada, was on Highway 401, and then the Holy Ghost manifested all those miracles because Bill had no faith for those miracles. Bill came doubting to Catherine Coleman's, came back overwhelmed with God. Then God did a miraculous manifestation, but see the healing power was when they all went to Sister Coleman's meeting. See, that's how the healing was given. But the manifestation sometimes takes time depending on what you're fighting. And that's what happened with Abraham. And then it goes on to say this. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees. Say, God wants you out of some things. Come on, say it with me. God wants you out of some things. A lot of people, why isn't God blessing you? Because you're not getting out of some things. And then he says, I'm getting you out of these things to give you this land, to give you this land to take possession. So God gives it to you, but you must take possession. Do you know that right now we're going to pray for the Middle East? I want you to know the Middle East and there's countries, but the countries have leaders. It's the leaders that have an agenda the people don't want war. Most Russians don't want to be in war with Ukraine. Most uh, uh, Muslims and Arabs that are attacking don't want to be, but there's leaders. And I want you to know that this church has done an enormous amount to help Israel at this season, more than we've ever done. And they told us at one time we were the, there was nobody further our size that had, that they knew of had done more for Israel. But this past year, we even multiplied that. But I want you to know the same amount we've done in Iran. I can't tell you too many details, but we have one of our largest missions is in Iran. If I took what we'd sown into our Muslim family, because I'm sown into the Muslims believing they're going to be family. And if they don't get to be family, I'm just going to bless them and in a second, I'm going to remind you about our, our, our largest, up until this year, our largest outreach into the Muslim world through helping sick and poor people. Say, sick and poor people. If you want God to help you, do what God likes to do. I'm just giving you secrets that have prospered me all my life. I want you free to know that you're here to change other things. And then God will come in and change things for you, but you got to change things out there so that he can come and change these things for you. And then it says, but you got to take possession. Father, we're praying for the Middle East. There's many nations within countries, just like in Canada, we've been teaching people, many nations, which are nationalities, people groups, not countries. Men create countries, God deals with people. And there's many different people in many different nations in the Middle East as they're on high alert right now. As no trains are running in Northern Israel. As only a few grocery stores are full, everybody has packed and filled their house with extra water. Right now that's in Israel. 
but those that are, again, in this great opportunity you gave this church to be part of this new fantastic outreach in, in about eight or nine major Muslim nations that we're there to bless all nations and all groups. Say, all nations and all groups. If, if this church goes on long enough, it can bless every nation on the planet. But as of now, we've probably got about 15, 20 that we're heavily into blessing. But Lord, we're just here to pray your protection, your blessing. We're praying that people will fall on their knees and call unto God that have never called unto God in any and every one of these nations. Politically is the politics, but people is God's business. Say people is God's business. And if you can agree with that, if you can't just stay neutral, if you can agree with that, say amen in Jesus' name and be praying in the spirit if you're smart.